Good morning. Okay, just wanted to check the mic. <laughs>
Thank you so much for sharing that powerful message with us, Sean. I really appreciate that. Well, now is also my privilege to introduce my friend, Jeff Kellogg. And uh, Jeff, come on up here, brother. <coughs> Jeff and I have been through a lot together. Um, we, we didn't meet until we were actually in ministry, um, but he was serving in Muscatine and Clinton District, and I was serving in Iowa City. And uh, he had a young family, as I did, and um, we just hit it off and became fast friends, and, and we became great friends, and we became best friends. Mm. And we've spent a lot of time together, and we've gone through a lot together. Very real moments. And uh, I respect this man very much. He's been a dear and faithful friend, and so has his wife. They are just precious to us. And I'm glad that we have the opportunity to have you share today, brother. Um, I'm looking forward to what the Lord has placed on his heart. We're going to have a prayer, and I'm going to turn things over to you, all right? Father, I want to thank you very, very much for giving us this opportunity to gather together. Lord, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, that you will pour out your spirit in this place. I pray that just now you will take a hot coal from your altar and touch Jeff's lips, as it were, that he may speak the very words that you have prepared for him. Now give us all eyes to see and ears to hear. And we give you this time, Lord. Bless your servant in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Can you hear me okay? I know that, uh, of course, that um, Pastor Jeff just had uh, prayer, and I, I thank you for that and the kind words, bro brother. Wasn't that song beautiful? Amen. You know, um, I had the opportunity because driving down here from Michigan to hear my lovely wife, you know, practice it, and and right at the end of the uh, the song, as reminded me as we were uh, driving down, and she was preparing. The song has the two words in there greater thirst and that really spoke to my heart because we're getting ready to go into a new year amen 219 and um, that probably is it, it, there's no better prayer than to ask God that we might that I might have a greater thirst for him in the new year. Amen. A greater thirst. It isn't a privilege to be here. Every state has its beauty. And driving down 55, and we're from southwest Michigan, so greetings from your brothers and sisters in Glenwood, Seventh-day Adventist Church. Not too far from Notre Dame. Everyone knows where Notre Dame is, so, you know, I tell people, well, we're not too far from Notre Dame over there on Lake Michigan. But driving, driving down here, it's just beautiful. I can just imagine what it looks like in the fall. You know, with the, the beautiful trees and such, and the, I don't know if, if you in Missouri here just if you call the, 
the hills, hills or mountains? But they're hills? Thank you. They're big. They're beautiful. You know, and um, you know the you know the rock. I want to call it slate, but I'm not. You know, I I don't know. It looks like that. You know, cut into the hills. There, it's just beautiful and uh, really appreciated. And we were driving down, and and it was dusky, dusty or dusky, and getting kind of dark, and the. There was big black clouds above and then light clouds underneath that that are right above the hills. Just beautiful, just beautiful. So the, the title of what I'm gonna talk about this morning and share with you is Fear Not. And I, I just thought it was, uh, would be a good, um, a good talk or a good sermon to, to launch us into the, to the new year. This is, the, as you know, the last Sabbath of 2018. And of course, um, uh, Tuesday, I believe, will be New Year's Day. So fear not. Now, I don't want you to hold me to this, per se, but it is said that the word fear not or do not fear or don't be afraid is mentioned in the Bible 365 times. But then I came across, someone must, you know, must, someone must have missed one because another person said, no, 366 times, one for each day, and then the Lord covered leap year two. I thought that was I thought that was good. So fear, you know, Webster's dictionary says the instinctive emotion aroused by impending or seeming danger, pain, or evil. And then next to that I put the, wrote down anxiety. To be afraid, to feel fear, fearful, frightened. You know, we all have fears, don't we? We're human. We all experience fear. And we know it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. God doesn't want his people to live in fear. Amen. So I'm going to share in just a few minutes Three suggestions on how we can, you know, through God's word and his guidance and counsel, how we can not live in fear. And I just mentioned that we live in fear at times. What about people in the Bible? Do they live in fear? What about Adam and Eve? Fear of facing God. What about Noah? Imagine I can just, you know, just think of Noah having a fear about the, the daunting task that was upon him. What about Moses? Moses said, they will not believe me, Lord. I'm slow of speech. When the Lord was asking him to go into Egypt and to deliver his people. We know that Moses was in the palace for 40 years. He went into the wilderness for 40 years. They will not believe me. What about Elijah? Elijah. You know, this, the biblical account of Elijah on Mount Carmel brought fire down. The Lord brought fire down upon 850 false prophets. 
And then the evil Queen Jezebel put out the word that she was out to kill him. That brought fear into his life, didn't it? Sure it did. How about Jonah? You know the story of Jonah. Imagine he was pretty fearful when he was in the belly of a great fish or whale for three days and three nights. We can go on and on. Esther, when she was going between, before the king, no one went before the king. Fearful of the Jews being eradicated. And of course, Daniel. Daniel facing the lion's den. You know, King Darius was even fearful. He had a very special relationship with Daniel, didn't he? What about in the New Testament? How about Peter? Peter walking on water. Took his eyes off the Lord and he started to sink, didn't he? I know that bring fear into, into my life. What about Peter that when Jesus was going to be crucified, or he was crucified, and he was the crowd. Remember the crowd? And Peter was there. He was fearful of what was going to happen to him. He denied the Lord three times. Even Mary, the mother of Jesus, overcome with the reality of carrying the Savior. What about Jesus himself? Think about it when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Fearful. Fear is not a sin. Now, I'm not going to stand here and say that fear might not lead us into sin. But it's an emotion. It's real. What about Jesus on the cross? Why have you forsaken me? Talking to the Father. That, that fear of never seeing the Heavenly Father again. That separation. And we go through history, and I have to mention, you know, the great reformers, Huss, Jerome, Luther, many people during the, that time of the Dark Ages lost their lives. And then, of course, I also need to mention being an Adventist Christian, our own founders of this church. You can read many accounts of Ellen and James White, you know, their mission in, in, in you know, in, in bringing these, uh, you know, these different truths to the people the, at times, you know, it was hard. It was fearful at times. Just imagine the great disappointment of 1843. Men and women, Adventist Christians, sold everything that they had because they believed with their whole heart that Jesus was going to come. But they were wrong. So when Jesus didn't come, imagine they were fearful. What were they going to do? Well, what about us today? 
we experience fear. Maybe not enough money to pay our bills. Maybe a medical problem. Fear of our children in the world. This world isn't getting any better, folks. What about our children that haven't turned their hearts over to the Lord yet? I fear for that. I want my children to be in the kingdom. What about fear of losing your income? You know, I think it's safe to say that probably most families live on two incomes in the days that we live in. If one spouse was to lose their job, that brings hardship. That brings fear upon the family. How about fear of losing a spouse or a loved one? Been married to someone for, I guess it doesn't matter, you know, but 30, 40, 50 years? You know your spouse, after that much time, like the back of your hand, and they're gone. Yes, we have the hope of seeing our spouse once again. But the fear of living our lives without someone that you've lived your whole half or whatever or most of your adult life with? Fear of being alone. Fear of losing a pet. A companion. about fear of sharing the gospel with a neighbor or a friend or someone in your own family? Fear of a possible divorce? Fear of peer pressure for young folks? And fear of dying without Christ? It's real. So what can we do, brothers and sisters, to fear not? Well, let me suggest this morning. I didn't mean to start out gloomy or whatever, but that's the facts. Those are real things, isn't it? But what can we do? Three points I want to share with you. Meditating upon God's word. Obedience to God's will in praise and thanksgiving. Let's take a closer look. And you can follow along with me, but I'm going to go, not real fast, meditating upon God's Word. How about if you join me in opening your Bibles and turn the pages to Psalm 27.1. Psalm 27.1. And I selected about three or four uh, verses in the Psalms. Psalms 27.1, I'm reading from the New King James Version. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I what? Whom shall I fear? Let's turn the pages over to Psalm 34, 4. Psalm 34, 4. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from my what? From my fears. Psalm 56. Three and four. Psalm 56, three and four. Whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you. 
In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not what? I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? And then one more in the Psalm 62, 7 and 8. Sixty-two, seven, and eight. In God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength. And my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Amen. Promises. Meditating upon God's word. Asking the Holy Spirit to bring these, these texts to our minds. When we're going through some tough times, when we're being fearful, we can find solace in God's word. Amen? Amen. I think it was Jess... Forgive me if I'm, if I'm mistaken that read our scripture reading this morning. Joshua 1.9. It's been quite a few years now, but not that many years, that that text really became real, majorly real to me, because my wife became seriously ill. I was fearful. Sure, my wife was fearful. And it came upon this text, this verse, Joshua 1 9. Let's read it again. It's so, so important and such a blessing to me and my wife because I would come home from work. Pray with her, share scripture, promises with her. But this one here, at Joshua 1 9 says, Have I not commanded you? Wow, that's pretty, pretty forceful, but. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be what? Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Lord, are you with me? Are you really with me? Do you really understand, you know, this fear that I'm, feeling inside all these things that are going through my mind about, oh, finances and just, just all kinds of things. And my wife, is my wife going to get well again? The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You know, and every time I shared that, we read it together, it just, my belief We'll get stronger. Joshua 1.9. Meditating upon God's word. Leads us to obedience to God's will. Now let me share this with you, brothers and sisters, that Being obedient to God's will, I want to make it very clear that we are saved by what? Grace. We are saved by grace, through faith. Our works are not going to get us to heaven. You've heard it before, I'm going to say it again. You know that most religions out there in the world be it Hinduism, be it Buddhism, be it Islam, 
is a works-oriented religion to appease God, to work for salvation. Now, the reason I'm saying that is because, in making that clear, is because, you know, you might be saying, oh, boy, obedience, that means I've got to do this, I've got to do that, you know, and I can't do this, I can't do that. Now, what I'm saying is, as far as the second point here, is that meditating upon God's Word, spending time in God's Word, spending time in prayer with God, the obedience to God's will comes, may I say naturally, as we walk with the Lord. Your faith and your trust, my faith and my trust is increased. So because we spend that time with the Lord, we fall in love with the Lord more and more, we want to please the Lord. Out of what? Out of love. You know, God is not a God of force. He doesn't force His will upon us. He's very clear in His Word about how He wants us to live only because He wants the best for us. We're fallen. We need grace each and every day. But because of love, a love relationship with God, God's commandments are important to me. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. God says, worship me. I am, only, I am the only one and true God. God says, do not bow down to idols or graven images. God says, do not take my name in vain. God says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. God says, honor your mother and father and you have a, a, a long life. God says, do not kill. God says, do not commit adultery. God says, do not steal. God says, do not covet. And God says, do not bear false witness against your neighbor. A love relationship. And of course, God, through his word and through our walk, each day with God, he expounds on that. He through his word, and he helps us to understand that better. Meditating upon God's word. Obedience to God's will. You know, Joshua, just mentioned that Joshua was one of his favorite characters. I just can't imagine Moses, who Joshua was, you know, highly, highly respected Moses. Joshua was kind of like his right-hand man, if you will. Moses has died. Joshua has the responsibility to lead probably about a million people into the promised land. But because he loved the Lord, he wanted to be obedient to God's will. So he had to take that faith and that trust, and he needed to put it into action, didn't he? To lead the people into the promised land. He acted. He acted upon his faith. And it was obedient. You know, Mary, the Virgin Mary, in Luke 1, she said, let it be according to your word. Noah, he built that ark. He preached 120 years. Peter, The Lord told him, do not be afraid that he will be, kept, he will be fisher, a fisher of men and women. 
Peter accepted the call to feed God's sheep. Daniel, because of Daniel, because of his love relationship with the Lord, he stood firm. The king noticed and God was glorified. Daniel gave the glory and the honor to the Lord. Paul. What about Paul? Took the gospel to the Gentile world. You know, Paul, it was, uh, what, not too long ago, we studied the You know, the, the book of, uh, I want to say Romans, but what quarterly it was, but it was on the, uh, the missionary journeys of Paul. You know, there's so many times that Paul, he wanted to, he, he had a real love and, and such for the brethren, the Jews. He wanted, there was times he wanted to do, you know, do this or go there, but the Lord through the Holy Spirit said, no, I want you to go here. He was obedient to what the Lord wanted him to do. What about Joseph? You know, Joseph said that he was, uh, he was there in captivity, if you will, to preserve life. After all he went through, being in the dungeon and, and such and all that, to preserve life. And Jesus in Matthew 4.4, 4, if you still have your Bibles open, Matthew 4.4. 4. Yeah, he's in the wilderness here. But he answered and said, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Jesus was obedient to the Father's will. So meditating upon God's word, claiming those promises, believing in those promises. And I can assure you, brothers and sisters, the more time we spend... And with God, in prayer, in meditation upon his word, our faith and our trust, and that fear is going to flee. The third point, third suggestion, is praise and thanksgiving. Before I go, there's another point I want to make about, you know, a, a relationship with God and, and uh, being obedient to his will. And, you know, God desires, friends, God desires for us to reach a higher spiritual level. Do you believe that? Amen. Absolutely. A higher spiritual level. Um, like being more involved in the church, maybe. You know, uh, reaching out, as I mentioned earlier, to your neighbors or friends, co-workers. Impressing our hearts to be, to be more faithful with, you know, our offerings, ties, being more generous. You know, and to forgive yourself and others. To gain victory over addictions. Maybe, but I don't want to get the medal in, what we're watching, what we're listening to, consuming our time. You know, I... 
I'm all for technology. Don't get me wrong. I think technology is a wonderful thing. And, you know, especially me and Pastor Jeff were talking about a little bit yesterday evening that it, it, it's exciting because that just tells us that Jesus is getting a little bit more closer to coming. Because the Bible says that when knowledge increases, Jesus is going to be coming. But you know, um, if you go to a city or a town or just about anywhere, everybody's head is down. Everybody's head is down looking at the phone. My friends, we need to be looking up. We need to be looking for Jesus, right? We need to be stepping out on our porch on a, on a clear autumn or winter evening, looking up to the stars, seeing the beauty. Looking up, not down. So I said that God desire, desires us to reach a higher spiritual level. Now, I was listening many, many months ago to a, to a sermon. And it, and it was a woman, a woman preacher. And this really stuck to me because she said, you know, uh, about, you know, re reaching a, a higher a higher spiritual level that uh, new level, new devil. I'm like, wow. It is so true because, you know, when we're spending that time with Jesus and we're allowing the Holy Spirit to work in and through our lives, changing us, those plague spots in our character... And God, through his word, is changing us. That makes the devil mad. It makes the devil mad that I might want to get involved in another part of the, the church, another responsibility. I've, I'm a deacon or what have you, and, and God is laying upon my heart to, to, to go into a, a, another direction, to use my... Uh, a gift or gifts in that area. And it makes the devil mad because that means that, you know, people are going to respond. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. Because we have who on our side? We have the Lord on our side. So a higher spiritual level, a new level, new devil. That's not to put fear in you. That is where we need to praise the Lord even more. So then my last suggestion or point is about praising the Lord and giving thanksgiving. Remember, recall the times that God has brought us through, you through, the different situations, the different times that our hearts are aching, breaking, the pain, the situations, and how God has brought us through. Praise him. Thank him. Last night, over Pastor Jeff and Rhonda's home, Rhonda was having a devotion. And, and forgive me, Rhonda, I might not have everything, you know, but what stuck to me is she said, you know, she was talking to a, a, a friend in the church, or just a friend, and uh, Rhonda was uh, struggling, or it was a, at that particular point in time in her life about you know not being, not praising the Lord, and not being thankful, and she you know and and the Lord laid it upon her friend's heart to to gave her an exercise and said uh, every 
30 minutes, you know, put it in your phone or your, you know, your watch, whatever. Every half hour, every 30 minutes, when that alarm goes off or whatever, I want you to say one thing that you're thankful to the Lord for and praise the Lord. So Rhonda says she started doing that. I can't remember how much time she did it, but you know what? <laughs> what a blessing. She said, man, it was amazing. 30 minutes, I'd praise the Lord for something. Thank you, Lord, for my husband. Thank you, Lord, for, for life today. Thank you for my children. 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes. Before you know it, she didn't need the, the alarm to go off on her watch or her phone. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. Then we are focused upon the Lord. And the fear will flee. In closing, I want to turn to the psalm again. Psalm 28. Six and seven. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices. And with my song, I will praise him. In Psalm 107, I'm in the Psalms a lot because there's so many promises. 107, listen to this. Brothers and sisters, 107.1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is what? He is good. You serve a good Lord, a loving Lord, a Lord that just desires nothing more but intimacy, a pure intimacy with his children. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Amen? Amen. We won't turn there, but there's two verses. I just, it just, just fills my heart's cup. And in, 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 uh, write it down, Jeremiah 31, 3. God loves us with an everlasting love. What's everlasting? That's forever. God loves you with an everlasting love. My last text. Lamentations. Oh my, lamentations. Isn't that a book of weeping? Lamentations, verse, chapter 3. Verse 22. Listen to these words, my friends. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. What did I say? His compassions what? Fail not. They are new. They are new every Morning. Amen. Every morning, his mercies are new. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in who? I hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. So as we launch into a new year, fear not. There's going to be challenges. I hope by prayer for a greater thirst for Jesus is your prayer. That we'll meditate upon God's word when we're going through those tough times. And they're going to come.
that we'll be obedient to God's will when God speaks to our heart through His Holy Spirit and asks us to do something that we think that we could never do. But because He loves us with an everlasting love and because through His Word, He has filled our love's cup, our cup, our heart's cup with His love, that we do it because we love Him. And we need to praise Him. Right, Rhonda? We need to thank the Lord. So, we are going to have our closing hymn. Our last closing hymn for the last Sabbath of 2018. Everywhere with Jesus, I can safely go. I'd like to ask Pastor Jeff to come up here because I'd like Pastor Jeff to have the benediction. Brother, as we, in a few short days, we're going to be going into a new year. And I want to give you a challenge. You know, you know maybe that sounds negative, but I just would like to, well, yeah, I'll give you a challenge that... Um, If you want a special prayer, I'm not asking you to come forward, but what I would like you to do is, you know, when uh, Pastor Jeff has a prayer with every eye closed and, you know, and head bowed, you know, that I just like you, if you want, if you're struggling and, and, and having a tough time right now and, and, you know, we want, you want, you desire so much to have that greater thirst for the Lord in this coming year. And that the Lord would, would help us to, to meditate upon his word, to spend time with him and help us, Lord, although we are, fallen, we are fallen creatures, but he loves us and we want to do your will. We want to be obedient Amen. to your will. And we want to praise you and we want to thank you. When, Jeff, when Pastor Jeff has a prayer, I just want you to reach your hand, reach your hand to the stars, Lord, and say, in your heart, what's in your heart just between you and the Lord. I challenge you to do that. The Lord knows what's in our hearts, but you know, there's something, there's something, even though no one's looking around, it's something that, you know what, it's, it's action, it's putting your faith and your trust 
in action. Amen. And say, Lord, Lord, this is what's in my heart. Maybe you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Probably most of you have been longtime Adventist Christians. Praise the Lord. Maybe you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you've gotten off that path. And you want to come back. Get back on that path. The Lord knows. The Lord knows our hearts. Amen. And he will do that. He will shine his face down upon you. He loves you. He loves you with an everlasting love. Amen. I'm going to borrow your mic. Just pull that off. I want to add before I have prayer that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power Amen. and of love and of a sound mind. Mm. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, today we have been reminded of why we should not fear or how we can com combat fear. And Lord, we acknowledge that there are many times that we have been overcome in this past year with, with fear. Fear of many different scenarios or relationships or, or outcomes, some real and some imagined. But the fears that we have dealt with internally, they have been very real and difficult. And today, we want to surrender those fears to you, Lord. We want to acknowledge that you're bigger than every problem that we will face in 2019. You are big enough to heal us from every, uh, everything that ails us or afflicts us. You are able to deliver us from everything that holds us in bondage. Mm. You, Lord, are able to speak into our lives health and wholeness and soundness and well-being and strength and wisdom and peace and goodness because of who you are. And now, Lord, I want to ask you that you will help us to follow these directives, that we will meditate upon your word, that we will remember your commandments, Lord, that we will especially take time to ponder and meditate and memorize your promises. Mm. And, and Lord, I pray that we will be mindful of the stories of, of the different people in the Bible, of both their failings and their victories, how you have always stood by them and brought them through. And, and Lord, I pray that we will be students of your word, that we will take it to heart and really meditate in the coming year. I also pray, Lord, that we will take that step to obey your will. Lord, that we will start each day by surrendering ourselves to you, Amen. by giving ourselves over to you, being willing to lay down our plans or take them up as your will should indicate. And I pray also, Father, that you will give us courage that every time we step forward in faith, that you will be there to sure up our steps. Mm -hmm. As we follow you, even when it seems dark or difficult, even when, when the way seems uh, obstructed or, or even blockaded, that if you have called us, you will open the way. Yes. And I pray, Father, that we will learn through experience as, as we obey your will, that your biddings are your enablings. And so, Father, I ask for uh, your, your help mm. that we could um, be given the strength and the faithfulness to obey you. Yes. And now, Father, I want to conclude this prayer with actually just being mindful of Jeff's final point, and that is being filled with thanks and praise. Mm. I, I pray that we will turn our minds toward who you are and how great you are and know that we are in your hands and the reason that we should be strong and be courageous is because you are with us mm -hmm. and that we can have praise on our lips in every scenario even if it is a difficult one even if we're going through trials and tribulations that we can know that you are with us and we can praise you for that fact I pray that we will learn to be a people who are slow to complain. Mm. 
Lord, but quick to praise you. Yes. Prick, quick, quick to point out the um, things that are we can give thanks for. Yes. And so as we head into 2019, Lord, we thank you for bringing us through this year. Mm. Everyone here has faced challenges. Everyone has um, gone through things. And you have held on to us all. And here we are getting ready to launch into a new year. Mm. I pray that you will help us to faithfully follow you and all the while have your praises on our lips. In 